Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, we're gonna go over why I'm redoing my PID control toaster oven, how to build your own PID control toaster oven, step by step, and then how to tune your PID control toaster oven, and then some of the results that I've been able to achieve with my $20 toaster oven, and I think you'll be pretty impressed. So with that, it's a long video. I'll put timestamps in the first comment. And if you care about having super precise tempering temperatures for your knives, this is the video for you. So I'm gonna start off by giving a little bit of a background of my experience with PID controllers. I started off a few months ago building a PID controller for this toaster oven, and I'll show a picture of that right here. So that PID controller, it looked ugly and it took up a lot of space on the shelf. However, it worked really good. With the help of the guys at Blade Forms, I was able to get that toaster oven to hold around the four degree total variance, meaning two degrees above my set point and around two degrees below my set point, which is excellent for a $20 toaster oven. So off of that success, I figured, you know, let's take this PID controlled system or this PID controller system and put it into the side panel of the toaster itself. Not only would it help it look better, but it would also save me some space on my shelf. So I did that, and it didn't work out too hot. Due to probably my poor insulating job, but also just the nature of these toaster ovens running really hot, it ended up melting down my SSR, and here's a blown up picture of that. So, melted the SSR, totally not gonna work out. So the decision now is to take these components that are still good out of the side panel of the toaster oven get a new SSR and build them into a cleaner, smaller uh, PID controlled plug and play box. So I wanted to mention two more things while I'm taking this thing apart. Number one is I'm putting a wiring diagram in the description below in a PDF format so that you can download it, follow along with the build, or also just use it when you're building your own. And second of all, I'm putting a product list in the description below to make it easier for you to find the components used to build the PID control toaster oven. And also those are affiliate links. So any revenue generated by those links helps me make more videos and helps the channel overall. And lastly, what I'm showing right here, I'm putting a switch in the back of my toaster oven. This switch is going to power the convection fan uh, by itself so that the fan's not turning on and off, on and off while the PID controller is trying to match a specific set point temperature. So that's what you're seeing right here. With that, we'll get back into the build. Uh, the PID controller I'm using is an RKC Rex C100. Uh, the other good options are the Inkbird and the MyPen controllers, but this one's cheap and I have it. Uh, we're gonna need a female plug and also a male plug to accept uh, a power cord, uh, just like on your computer. So we're gonna wire up both of these. Uh, you need a heat sink and an SSR. I'm using an Inkbird SSR. It's a uh, SSR 40DA solid state module. This one's made in China. They also have a couple others that you can get that are made in Taiwan and are pretty good. I uh, have a switch just to turn the PID controller on and off. And then I have a piece of plastic and this is going to be used to mount the heat sink to and then I'm going to epoxy this plastic to my job box. And speaking of the job box, uh, this time around I got a nice job box. I've already marked the hole that I need to put in it for the switch, uh, the power cable and the plug-in and then on this side, the PID controller. And lastly, I have a 15 amp fuse within this fuse holder that we're gonna put on the box as well. And that's it, that's all the components. You'll also wanna have some thermal paste uh, to mount the SSR onto the heatsink. Okay, let's get going. So go ahead and measure out your components and start drilling and cutting these slots for these components to fit into your project box. I'm using a half inch drill bit and then a jigsaw uh, to go ahead and turn those circular holes into square holes for our components. All right, so we have our project box uh, cut up, PID fuse holder, switch, uh, female male, male and female plugs, and a hole for the thermal couple to go in. The uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our SSR. Um, I already went ahead and screwed it to this base plate that I made out of plastic. I'm going to be epoxying uh, this to the bottom of my project box, and then the heat sink just screws in here. The SSR is going to go here, so let's take our uh, thermal paste. So let's go ahead and put a dab of thermal paste here. All right, now we're going to place our SSR on top of that and screw it, screw it to the base. Right. 
Now we have our SSR connected to our heatsink. So step one. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and epoxy this down into the drop box. I'm going to put this on the bottom here. Roughed it up a little bit to a 60 grit roughing. All right. And we're going to set this guy right in here. Okay. Now we're going to wait. You know, while I have the epoxy mixed, I'm going to go ahead and epoxy the inside of this female plug so that when it comes in here, it won't come out easily. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just do edges. On the old box, I did this with super glue and it worked pretty good, but might as well put it in there for life. All right, that should, uh, that should never come off. Out. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. Looks like it's stuck pretty good to this paper. So we're just going to be gentle with it so we can get on with the project. Might as well put in our plug in the back. So I have two screws, uh, self-tapping screws for this. We're going to use these two guys. I already pre-drilled these holes. Make this part easier. Yep, that looks pretty straight. All right, this is in there. So, your PID controller. Make sure that when you're putting this guy in, uh, you attach this um, retainer. So it has little um, feet on it, so it hits these ribs. You want this squiggly thing pointed towards the, uh, the box. So we go in like this. And then squiggly forward. We're gonna go ahead and not put it in all the way because I want some more space in here uh, while we're doing the, uh, the wire up. Okay, so our plug's gonna go in back here. I'm also gonna leave this out uh, just for now so I, I have a little more space. I am gonna put the fuse in, fuse holder. Uh, it has a little retaining screw. You want to make sure you get this on here before you start wiring it. Otherwise, you won't be able to get it on. Notice I put the tab on the top to make it easier to get to. Okay, we're going to get started with the wiring. I've already pre-cut and pre-attached these connections on these wires just to make this process faster for the video. Uh, but all I did was put the, I got these attachments, or uh, terminals, at Harbor Freight. And I just slide them on there and crep them down. So the first thing I'm going to do is the ground. Uh, this one's going to be kind of tight in here, so it's going to go to the ground wire of the male plug. All right, we've got it on the female side. We're going to bring it around here and go ahead and connect it to the male plug. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, got that on there. So we'll push this, push this down here, get it out of the way. Okay, so that's the ground. Then we're going to start with the black wire uh, and trace through that path. So the first step is we're going to go from this right terminal to our switch. To our switch. Ooh, I saw how fast that was. Okay, next we're going to go from our switch to our fuse. So we've gone from the male side of the plug to the switch, to the switch, to the fuse. Next we're going to go from our fuse holder to number one of our PID controller. And then this is going to go into number one of our PID controller. Now, um, there's another wire that's going to go there in uh, conjunction with this wire from the fuse. So we're going to put them both in at the same time. This wire is going to go from number one of the PID controller to number one of your SSR. So nail plug, switch, switch to fuse, fuse to number one, and then number one to number one of the SSR. I'm going to hold this thing tight because I don't want to bust it. The epoxy is still curing. Okay. And then we're going from number two of the SSR. Uh, to the right side of this female plug. So 
So we have our first circuit here uh, on the black side. We're going from the male plug to our switch, from our switch to our fuse holder, from our fuse holder to terminal number one of the PID controller, to terminal number one of the SSR, and then terminal number two from the SSR makes the connection back to the female plug. All right, so now that we have the switch wired up, I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed. All right, our switch is installed. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the white, and the white's uh, way easier. Uh, it's basically going from each of these plugs to number two of your uh, PID controller. So let's do that real fast. So we're going to the left terminal of the male plug first. If I remember right, this one's pretty hard to get on. Notice I bought a large project box. Uh, and I'm still having some uh, issues, so if you are thinking about using a smaller product box, project box, I would advise against it. Spend extra dollars. Okay, I got that one hooked up. Let's see. Let's get this one hooked up. Okay. That one's on there. Both of these are going to terminal number two of our PID controller. Okay, so we got our two white wires attached to terminal number two of our PID controller. So what we have now is our black goes from the male plug to the switch, from the switch to the fuse holder, from the fuse holder to number one of the PID, from number one of the PID to number one of the SSR, to number two of the SSR, to the right side of the female plug. Then the whites come off of both plugs and go to number two. So the way this works is this SSR is uh, turning, connecting these two to each other based on inputs from your PID controller via number three and number four. So that's what we're gonna connect next. We're gonna connect number three and number four to our PID controller with these two wires. So the first one I'll connect is the negative terminal. It goes from negative number four to uh, negative number five on the bottom of the PID controller. So, Perfect. So he's on there. And then we're gonna go uh, from positive number three on the SSR to positive number four on our PID controller. All right, so that is the full wiring. The last thing to do is to connect our thermocouple. So our thermocouple wires will come through this hole right here. I'm gonna be connecting uh, the blue wire on top and the red on bottom. You'll know if you have them mixed up uh, due to the fact that when you hold the thermocouple, it won't get hot or get cold. So we're gonna hook up the blue one to our number nine, which is negative, and our red one to number 10. This will be the last time we go over this. I wanna go over the full wiring. So we're gonna follow the black wires first, and then we're gonna do the white. Black wire number one comes from your male plug. This is gonna be what's plugging in to your wall. It goes to the switch. Then from the switch, it goes to your fuse holder. From the fuse holder, it goes to terminal number one of your PID. From terminal number one of the PID, it goes to terminal number one of the SSR, and terminal two of the SSR, and then the uh, female plug that your toaster will be plugging into. The whites go from both plugs to terminal two of the PID. And then the control, so the uh, number three positive and number four negative, go to the bottom two ports, number four and five over here, on your PID controller. So your PID controller sends a signal to four and three, telling us SSR whether or not to send power to your toaster oven. And then finally, uh, you have two thermocouple wires that will connect to the bottom left two terminals here. And that's it, that is wiring your PID controller. I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up with my trusty toaster oven here and uh, get to the tempering. So we're gonna get into tuning this bad boy here. It took me months to kind of figure out some of this stuff and multiple people on blade forms helping me out to get this far. So what I would advise when you're tuning a PID controller is first of all, not to trust the auto-tune feature. I'll show a graph right here on how bad the auto-tune is on these machines. The first thing I would suggest doing is zeroing out your I and your D, so your integral and your derivative um, controls on your PID controller. Uh, this effectively makes these uh, completely irrelevant to your tuning. You're going to be basically making this a P controller. So just like the cruise control on your vehicle, uh, P control will work very well. Start off by setting this P control to a low number, somewhere around 200 to 300. And then go ahead and run it and see what your variance is. I did this, uh, I set up a camera in the stopwatch next to the unit, 
and then I would just manually get in Excel and type in the values and plot it on a graph. So you don't have to be that uh, intense about this, but you can go ahead and see what your high points are and your low points are, and then see if you want to bring that P up or bring that P down. As you bring the P up, it should level off uh, the oscillations on this unit. So here is a graph with the P value or proportional value set to 600. And you can see that it's leveled out greatly from the auto-tune and also has leveled out from the P setting at 200 and 300. With the knives that I've been tempering lately, I've found that its major variance is normally between 211 degrees Celsius and 209 degrees Celsius. So that's a pretty darn good range for me. I'm very happy with that uh, for this toaster oven. Uh, you can also note that I put a little bit more insulation on the top sides and on the inside of the toaster oven, and that's just some KO wool. And I also put a thermocouple, a longer one, coming into the side of the toaster oven uh, so that it is more in the center of the toaster, and I, I like that a lot. And the last major change was getting rid of this large metal cage that I had to shield the knife. I found this to be unnecessary and all it did was cause the toaster to take a longer time to heat up. Also, the thermocouple was screwed into that cage, so what it did is it, it kind of lessened the sensitivity of the thermocouple itself, and I didn't like that. The thermocouple is better when it sits directly in air so that it can make really small, quick changes on the fly. So guys, that's everything about PID control toaster ovens in a nutshell. How to build it, how to tune it, and then my results with the whole system. So I hope you all really enjoyed this video and found it uh, instructional and informative and helpful. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button below. Uh, if you like content like this and other knife building stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow the channel. Until the next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.